A growing number of cities and towns are banning plastic straws and water bottles. And before you dismiss this as environmentalist alarmism, listen to the numbers. More than 8 million tons of plastic is dumped in our oceans every year. National Geographic reports that right now there is a plastic garbage patch bigger than Mexico in the Pacific Ocean. How that happened? Packaging accounts for over 40% of total plastic usage. Approximately 500 billion plastic bags are used worldwide each year. That's more than a million every minute. And a plastic bag has an average working life of 15 minutes. Over the last 10 years, we have produced more plastic than during the whole of the last century. Chew on those numbers. So now it's conscience versus convenience as plastic straws and bottles are in disfavor. Is it high time or hysteria? Let's ask Dr. Reese Halter, eco-stress physiologist who specializes in Earth's life support systems. He's the author of, among other books, Shepherding the Sea, the Race to Save Our Oceans. Reese, welcome back to the big picture. Holland, thank you very much for having me. Those numbers are scary. Even if humans discontinued all single service plastic packaging today, that stuff is yeah. still going to be there for hundreds of years, right? Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, everything that we have ever created plastic wise is here, is on our planet. It's a closed system. And, and I think the, uh, it's very important that the viewers understand that plastic is a petroleum-based product, and it's subsidized $5.3 trillion a year to the wealthiest, biggest polluters. It makes no sense. The plastics themselves, uh, Holland, are poisons. And having anything surrounded by poison, whether it's a, a plastic bottle, water bottle, or a wrapper is uh, uh, in, in, in essence, it's harming our bodies right off the hop. And then the, the disposability, this notion that we can just throw it away, it's killing everything in the ocean. We now think that there's in excess of 51 trillion pieces of plastics in the oceans and last month you and i chatted earlier uh, there was a pilot whale in uh, that came ashore in thailand mm. 17 pounds of plastics including 80 garbage bags now just to put this into perspective these animals when they uh, inadvertently swallow the plastics looking for food it blocks the digestive systems, meaning that they, they go into a blood poisoning situation, septicemia, and it takes a long time for them to die, Holland. It's a horrid way to exit on our beautiful blue planet. Well, and in terms of our body, uh, if you're ordering fish tonight, those particulate pieces yeah. of plastic, the shiny objects yeah. floating around in the ocean become yeah. uh, unintentional fish food, right? Yes, they do. And, and here also is something very important for people to be aware of. Plastic in the ocean uh, breaks down into smaller pieces and then actually into microscopic pieces. And all plastics are perfect sponges for DDTs, for PCBs, for phenols, for phthalates, for mercury poisoning. And when the fish eat it, it, the, the pollutants stick there, and as it moves up the food chain, it biomagnifies as much Holland as over 8 million times by the time it gets into a human being. So a little bit of poison is, is a lot for our bodies. We're an apex predator. It's just there's, there's nothing good uh, of any of this. So what we can all do is refuse plastics the the most uh, the the biggest one of the biggest disposables 
are these plastic petroleum-based straws. Each day in America, we are going through 500 million plastic straws. That's over 182 billion plastic straws in a calendar year. These straws are getting into my sea turtles and into the uh, uh, ocean uh, seabirds, into the whales, and it's a horrid death. Please refuse plastic straws. Hey, applause to uh, Starbucks, which has announced they're going to do away with single-use plastic straws, as have American yeah. and Alaska Airlines, Hyatt and Marriott yeah. Hotels, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, which is already out in the ocean, uh, among other companies. Tens of thousands of customers have signed petitions to get McDonald's and Subway and Disney to do the same. And the yep. single-serve plastic water bottles are being banned in a growing number of cities and towns and entertainment venues. Yeah. Does that at least help? Absolutely. Every step is a step towards Mount Olympus, and it's, it's from Miami Beach to Seattle to Berkeley, soon we believe San Francisco, uh, to name but a few cities that are, are stamping all of this uh, unnecessary waste that, uh, that we're swimming in and drowning and some people eating and, and the animals dying from. Uh, for people watching tonight, what is the most misunderstood aspect of this problem? Uh, uh, the invention. Our lips. We all have lips. <laughs> There's not even one reason why you can't use your lips, Holland, to uh, to hoe into your drink. There's um, no reason for us to be wasting. This is a waste situation, and the the root of it, as I said earlier, is the 5.3 trillion dollars annually handed to the fossil fuel companies. No brainer. Take it away. Take that away. And the lawmakers also need to do their, their duty, which is to protect the people and the planet, not the corporations. Dr. Reese Halter, thank you as always for stepping into the big picture. Thank you. At age nine, Milo Kress founded the Be Straw Free campaign. It's a partnership with EcoCycle, and Milo's mission is to get stores and restaurants to use fewer plastic straws. So if, when you buy a beverage, you are asked if you want a straw, thank Milo, who joins us from where he lives in Vermont. Milo, welcome to the big picture. Thank you, it's great to be here. Your website reports a staggering number. We use 500 million straws per day. How did you come up with that number? Well, it's an estimate that I came up with because I couldn't see anything else online at the time. When I was nine years old, I decided to do some research on how many straws we use every day in the United States. And so I contacted some straw manufacturers and the number that they gave me as an estimate for the size of the United States straw market per day was 500 million straws per day, which, as you said, is staggering. And I think that it's something that we can do something about. And for the past eight years, it's been something that I've tried to do something about. And I think I've been really successful. Now, to be clear, you're not anti-straw. You just want people to opt in rather than automatically receiving a straw they might not use, right? Absolutely. My goal is to encourage restaurants to offer straws instead of serving one with every drink automatically. Now, you're well known for raising our consciousness about plastic straws. Clearly, though, plastic shopping bags and bottled water and styrofoam cups are also ending up in landfills, too, right? Absolutely. But I think by focusing on straws, you can make one simple change in your life. And once you've done that, you see how easy it is to change other things. So that's why initially I tell people to focus on straws, focus on how you can reduce the number of straws you use. And then from there, it's easier to expand. Straws have been called a gateway plastic, meaning that once you stop using straws, you can look around at other plastics in your life that you can help reduce. A gateway plastic. Uh, you've been at this since age nine, and you just turned 17, so you've been at this for half your life. Are you encouraged that we are now more conscious about plastic? 
I am very encouraged. And these recent developments um, are very exciting. I hope that it becomes standard that restaurants offer straws instead of serving one with every drink automatically. Similar to the way it became standard for grocery stores to offer shoppers the choice between paper and plastic bags a few years ago. And I think we're really moving towards that. And that excites me quite a bit. I've been seeing you interviewed on TV since you were age nine. And I uh, know that interviewers can't resist asking what you want to be when you grow up. Now that you're getting there, what career path will you pursue? That's a really good question. I'm so passionate not only about the environment, but also about the sciences. And I hope to find a job that incorporates both of those things. I, I'd like to go into the field of artificial intelligence, but I see a lot of ways that artificial intelligence technologies can benefit the environment and our ecosystem. And that's something that I'd really like to explore. Uh, Milo Kress, bestrawfree.org. Thank you not only for your time tonight, but thank you for what you're doing.